Now, here's the hosts of Top Story, Kelly Class and Jill Keen. Good morning, and welcome to Top Story, 7360300 is the number, and good morning, Jill. Uh, good morning, Kelly. Here we are. Again. We are. I didn't sleep well last night. Uh, I at all. Understand. I'm tired. Yeah. You know how you have that like it's not sleeping headache kind of thing? Yes. I popped a couple Advil, but they aren't working yet, so I don't know. I'm just it's not it's, it was not a good night last night. That's all I can say. And tonight actually I'm teaching a ha- um sushi making class at hands on pottery. Really? So there you go, yes. A raw fish class. Is no, no, up. no, it's all vegetarian. No. You can add whatever you want, but I'm not going to deal with raw fish, no. Okay, so how how sushi is it sushi? Is different. Well, sushi is, is, you know, you have maki rolls, you have hand-rolled roll. It's anything. It's anything you can put in there. People say, you know, sashimi is the raw fish, actually, where they slice it up. But sushi is, you know, rice so, rolls so and stuff like that. So sushi can be anything. It doesn't, Absolutely. Sushi does not have to include raw fish. Clearly. They can have cooked I fish. You can have, have you ever been to a sushi restaurant? No. Clearly. Uh, no, you can have anything. Anything you can roll in there. And call it sushi. Well, yeah, sushi, um, the sashimi is the so raw fish. Sushi is all-encompassing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Actually, there is huh. a, yeah. I'll, I'll take I'll your do. word for it. I'll take your well, word for it. Well, have you been to a, uh, if you haven't been, then. No, yeah, I any, haven't. Well, no. everyone knows you can get all sorts of different things, so well, I'm there not, you go. I'm not real cultured in that line, you know. I mean, if you want to eat fish, This is the definition of sushi. A Japanese dish consisting of small balls or rolls of vinegar-flavored cold-cooked rice served with a garnish of raw fish, vegetables, or egg. Ta-da! It's okay. either. So, all right. Well, you got me there. I learned something today. So tonight I'll be doing S- vegetables. Sushi does not have to include raw fish. No, it does not. And if anyone wants to sign up, you can still call hands on. That's all, all right. I'm saying. All right. Well. So anyway, good. I'm going to have to have a nap today. That, oh, the point yeah. of the whole thing was I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. And the more with you that, aggravate me, you're, the you're, more I really need a nap. <laughs> you're a little snippy this morning. Yeah, like, you need something. Have you not had a sushi? <laughs> meal at all no i haven't well you Never should because you can get anything it's delicious all right well now that i know that i'll go into a restaurant and say i want some sushi but leave out the raw fish well you just pick out what you want they have all sorts of different rolls you can have okay. cooked cooked shrimp okay. you can have tempura well, i'll have to well when we go out to lunch sometime we'll do that and i'll, I'll have to order try for you yeah they have all sorts of things. You can yeah, you can order for yeah. You'll really be able to get back at me if you do that. No, no, I would not do that. <laughs> well, coming up at eight twenty, uh, we're going to be talking about. Um, what are we going to be talking about at eight twenty? We have a loaded schedule. We have. We um, from the Magic Valley Arts Council, that they're, they're doing a Glee-inspired musical, That's Summer right. Nights. Yes, That's they're right. going to tell us about that at eight thirty. We have the cops. I don't know what form we have. If city, county, state, I don't know. Should be the county. Today, okay. I believe. Yeah. We also have. Is it Ta- Tana Schroeder? Yes. A school program. Yeah. Some, I don't uh, know what that school program local, is. One of the local schools is doing well, so we're going to hear about that. And then we have Richard Stallings, the um, candidate running against Mike Sist- uh, Simpson for U.S. representative. All right. So, it's so a, there we it's go. A, it's a full house today. It's we, a full house. We do have some news to talk about this morning in the, the first story right off the bat. Now, when I saw this story, I, I thought to myself, so is all you have to do to rob a place anymore is just go in and show them a note they give you what you want, and you walk out. Uh, because the uh, police in Twin Falls are searching for a robbery suspect. Somebody apparently last evening walked into the Walgreens at uh, Pole Line in North Washington and apparently handed the, pharma- handed the pharmacist a note demanding specific painkillers. So they gave him the pills, and the guy walked out. Well, we don't know if he was armed or not armed. I don't know if they left that out or 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 didn't. But um... well, one of the one of the stories I read out of the several this morning said they weren't sure if he had a weapon or not. Yeah, but and, it, wouldn't, yes. wouldn't you want to? I don't know. May, maybe I would act differently if I were faced with this kind of a situation. 
I think if but they didn't have least, a weapon, you, I would say, no, no, you need to pay for this. If you have a weapon, then you're in a different situation. But if they don't show a weapon, and all they do is show you a note, and why, why wouldn't you say, well, why should I just give you these? If they then pull out a big old weapon of some sort, then you might want to reconsider, maybe. You think? But in the meantime, you just what? You just do what they want. All you have to do is walk into a store and say, "Hey, give me that." And or, so you have to comply. You give it to them, and they walk out, and that's it. Or you take a cab and you have your wheelchair and you roll <laughs> into a too. bank and you give them a note and they give you money. Um, I don't know if the company's policy. I told you before the show that actually my grandfather's father they had a deli and. He he was being robbed and he didn't give him the money and he was shot and killed. Yeah, so yeah. there's the philosophy: if you don't, you can get killed. It's not worth it. You know, it's I not under, worth it. I understand that. But, but if he had a gun or a weapon and they thought he might have been armed, weapon they had a war, weapon. Did you say? They think well, they they don't know if he was armed or not. All right. If the pharmacist thought he was armed, then you know what? I, Give him the pain pills, and he wanted pain pills, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're like, but okay. wouldn't you wouldn't you want to find out first um, rather than just start? I mean, if you start doing know. this, people are going to be walking in one behind another with notes saying, "Give me that." And and knowing that all you're going to do is comply and give it to them, and they walk out, and everything's hunky dory. I wonder what I time it this. was. Was it late at night? Are they yeah, open twenty four hours? It was after eight o'clock last night. Oh, eight or eight fifteen somewhere know. in there, I think. I don't. Uh, I mean, it's a judgment call. If you think someone has a gun, my sister was held up at gunpoint when she worked at a store. I mean, the guy was shaking. He had a gun in a bag, and he was a drug addict. Wanted money. Did it, she was, gave him was the it money. Was it a gun or what, what? Was it a gun? Did she see it? Uh, she didn't know. I mean, he was, you don't know at that point. And are you going to sit see, there I'm... when you're a mother and say, oh, geez, maybe I'll find out. I mean, the guy was high on drugs. His hand was shaking. And he said he had a gun. And the one manager couldn't open the register or a sales associate. And she called my sister over. My sister did. And she's trying to calm him down, blah, blah, blah. Freaked out. The store never got a security guard. And apparently he was robbing up and down Boylston Street. Telling everybody he had a gun. Well, I think he he had he had it covered and said he had a gun. But you're in that situation. Are you going to sit there and go, I don't believe you? I'm sorry. You know, your you know, life could be you, your I life might, could be ended. I she, might. I might. She might say. to this day has post traumatic stress syndrome over that. Seriously. I and, and I understand that. And so I'm not, you know, and it's I'm a not judgment. Her. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, people. Hindsight is twenty twenty, and it sounds really good today. You don't know what you would do in that situation, and that I wouldn't want someone to not. be shot. I do not know what I would do in that. You situation. can always get pills back. But from an outsider looking in, I'm thinking, is this all you have to do now? Well, maybe, and you know what? So they lost pills. Seven three six zero three hundred. Get a security guard at Walgreens now. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. I know exactly what I would do in that situation. I would give him any pill he wanted. Yeah. And I think most um, franchises, most stores now are telling their employees to just hand it over. They don't. They say whatever they're taking is not worth the risk of the right. employee's life. And I totally agree with that. Why why chance it? You don't know for sure. You don't. Mm -mm. And boy, I know what I would do. I would give him anything you wanted. Except me, of course. And all he has to do is <laughs> Everyone you, wants me. <laughs> uh, all he has to do is... Kelly said you were a you fossil. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Right. Yeah, exactly. Of course, everyone's a little older that wants me. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks yeah, for the thanks. call. Oh, well, my. I mean, I think it's, you know, it's a judgment call and the caller's right. And it's like, is it worth it? And if, and you're defending what? Some pills. You know, what if they did have a gun? Who knows? We don't really have a complete story and I don't know. But I say it's better safe than sorry. And you know what? Maybe Walgreens needs a security uh, guard now. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Um, I'm not sure, but I think most pharmacies have cameras at the pharmacy. Right. And photograph everybody that uh, that deals with that pharmacy. So they've probably got a picture of the guy. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. And of course, you know who pays for all that camera equipment. It's you and me, oh, the sure. customer. We do. Yeah. So I'm just saying, I, and, and, and I, I can't say that there. I have the answer here. I can't say that I have the answer here. But, I mean, 
when we as a society have come to the point where the bad guys are able to intimidate us enough to where all they have to do is hand us a note and we comply. Well, you know what, I, I mean, Kelly, when you're in that situation, here. then you can sit there and say no. But you know what, when you're not in that situation and you don't have a family or wife or you don't really want to you know, risk it, that's a whole nother ball game. 736-0300, top story, you're on the air. Yes, um, on the gun thing, my cousin had a liquor store in Colorado, and he cooperated, and he gave the guy all the money and everything, but because the guy had robbed another store down the street, when he left that store and those people called the police, the guy heard the sirens, and he shot my cousin anyway. Yeah. So just because you give him the money doesn't mean you're not going to have problems. No, yeah, it's true. That's, that's an but it, it, point what too, would yeah. you do in that situation? Well, what would I do? Yeah. If, if I had a gun like my cousin did, I would have tried to pull it out and defend myself. So your cousin but, had a gun, but apparently he didn't use it then, huh? He didn't use it. He decided, well, I'll just cooperate and let the guy leave. I did see. the guy have a gun? Yeah, obviously well, he did. Obviously he, he did. shot him. Did if he shot the... You know, it's but a he... tough call because, yeah. you know, either way, I mean, yes, you can get Thanks shot either way. Call, yeah, it. thank you. I'm sorry about your cousin. But, you know, in that situation, you have to sit there and think, do you try to be a hero? Or like in my sister's case, she gave him the money. You know, she's like, you know, she had a gun. It was in a bag. The guy's shaking. is on heroin or whatever. And, you know, someone like that, totally unstable. What do you do? And she freaked out and to this day is freaked. To this day, it affected her whole life. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Uh, good morning. I have worked in several industries where I dealt with a lot of businesses, and to the best of my knowledge, everybody's always been told if somebody approaches you and wants the money, give it to them. You know, we'll worry yeah. about the rest of it later, and, and most of the time, insurance covers it. I'm kind of curious if you if you go into a place and threaten them rob them and you don't produce the gun does the enhanced penalty of having a gun apply i think maybe it should even the implied yeah the threat, even if the they just say they have one it. I, it probably doesn't if they didn't have one because they you know I mean, how can you be we'll the, have to the, have our the former cop the, call in yeah either that or we'll ask uh we'll ask grant Loeb oh, yeah. next time he's back well we're the cop so, we have the yeah. cops today oh yeah yeah that, that's a good one too so i don't know it just opens up uh, a whole conversation here at what point do we have to comply? I mean, and and this could go to a lot of, a lot of things. I mean, I think it's your own judgment. Ra- we have to comply I mean, or not. I mean, for a while they they said you should just let them rape you. For the other, then it's fighting back. So you that's know what? Right. You're the one being raped. Uh, I don't know if someone should sit there and go. You know what, honey? Just lay back. You know, you got to do what's right for you in your situation. And I I'm not going to tell anyone what to do in that situation. Well, we're going to talk about uh, Glee next here on Top Story. 736-0300 is the number to call. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. 736 is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. And uh, just wanted to tell you that uh, Pat Hartzell, Pat Hartzell from Stanley & Company uh, can make it so. If you want to see a low and honey loader in operation, maybe you're considering purchasing one for your feedlot or dairy operation, uh, take a look at them first, and you can do that by getting a hold of Pat. He'll set you up uh, so that you can go see one of these as it is in operation. And Stanley and Company sells the low and honey loader, which loads all types of manure from liquid to frozen and dry up to 7 miles an hour. Almost as fast as I can scoop that stuff. So Yeah. Uh, at any rate, get a hold of Pat. His number is 280-1167. That's 280-1167, and he can set you up. Right now we have uh, Rob Newman with the Magic Valley Arts Council. We have, it looks like, what, Summer Nights, a musical review coming up. Tell us about this. It is. It is. It's, uh, it features 14 performers from around the Magic Valley, uh, Oakley, Rupert, Twin Falls, and Burley. And... Um, it's uh, music that um, you've probably heard before, but don't get a chance to hear it very often. Um, some of the some of the shows are fr- uh, some of the music um, numbers uh, are from Greece, Hairspray, uh, South Pacific, uh, the old guy. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's what that's that's <laughs> what I'm doing, and. Um, 
You got Frozen and yeah. Enchanted, Singing in the Rain. So did you guys take like the best songs of all these great musicals and put them together? Laurie Wilson did. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, and she picked a, a cast of, of great young, a younger generation of up and coming performers who who can do more than than just stand there in a tuxedo and sing <laughs> they can um, dance and sing and act their parts and it just um, it's, it's a very again, fast huh? paced very very um, exciting lots of energy mm. and you did this in show. Rupert correct mm-hmm. you did it over the 4th of July to raise money for the Wilson Theater renovation there it's almost there oh. still need we still need lights and curtains, but we're we're getting well, there. minor minor, <laughs> minor details. Minor details, yeah. It's really underrated um, to have to see the performance. <laughs> yeah, I think it's yeah, always yeah, better yeah, just to hear it. Hide behind the thing there, <laughs> and um, and and to raise money for the Rise Up and Sing Music Camp, which is held um, every summer, uh, usually at Minico High School, for area uh, youngsters to to get a taste of of music theater. Um, they actually teach them musical theory. They, we do little little parts of operas even. Hmm. Um, I started that with them six, seven, eight years ago. So uh, this. So are you? Have you been in the? Have you been in a teacher of music and and your whole uh, life, or what's your background? Bit, a little bit. I'm more of a of a coach. Okay. I like to to um, maybe refine a performance and make it uh, stage ready. So yeah. that's more what I do. But you like to aren't, perform aren't people, as well. People are kind of born with that talent, aren't they? I mean, well, I don't know. I spent fifty thousand dollars learning how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and I I call myself a semi-retired singer, and that just means nobody's calling anymore. <laughs> so. But you are in this show, and what yeah, are you yeah. singing? I'm actually singing um, a song from Camelot. Oh. I wonder what the king is doing tonight. Oh, okay. You know, I've, got, I've got to have my own. Burger King crown. Do you? Absolutely. Very cool. I asked, wow. I asked for one in the Seattle airport, and they thought it was for my grandson, certainly. So he um, said, of course. <laughs> and I'm singing, um, we're singing a duet, uh, Lori Wilson and I, from Spamalot. Oh. Okay. Uh, once in every show, there comes a song like this, is what it's called. And um, let's see, the third one I'm doing is... Um, I'm part of the ensemble for um, Ain't Nothing Like a Dame. I'm the crotchety old uh, floor mop. Now, isn't that sexist nowadays to call a woman a dame? Oh, probably, yes. The other other morning on on the TV station, they they couldn't quite get the music synchronized, and I said, (laughs) who's running the music? Sure enough. (laughs) A dame. <laughs> Sorry. And then you were booted <laughs> out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. <laughs> the hook came quick. So, so when does the show start? And how much are tickets? Tonight. Tonight. Where? 7 o'clock at the um, Twin Falls Performing Arts Center. Okay. Um, tickets are $15 at the door, um, $12 for Magic Valley Arts Council members. Um, you'll get every penny of your money's worth, I promise. Well, these songs sound amazing. And is yeah. it is it running... To, uh, Beyond tonight, tonight, tomorrow night, and Saturday night. Oh, great, great! So people from Oakley and Rupert, they're driving down here every evening. Oh, to put I'll this just on? yes, they are. Yeah. That's, wow, mm-hmm. wow. Well, I hope it's a big success, if for no other reason than for the performers. Ah, oh, true. So, yeah. but you guys but, like yeah. to perform anyway. But you have songs from Michael Bublé. You mm-hmm. have from Kiss Me Kate, Little Shop of Horrors. What song is that? Suddenly Seymour. Uh, come and find out. I will have to. <laughs> Very good answer. Suddenly Seymour. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so where can they oh. get tickets? Just at the door? Uh-huh. Okay, and it was 15, I sp- you said? I suppose they could call um, 734 Arts, 2787. Do you want to say that again charge. louder? 734-2787. Okay, for more details. Or if they, yeah, if they may need more information. Well, cool. And in a, in a month, in a month, in a month, the return engagement of the Sun Valley production of Forever Plaid. Okay. All right. So we got I'll, that to I'll look come back and talk You'll to come you. back, All Rob. Right. Well, best of luck. Break a leg. Thank you. Yeah, no kidding. Rob Newman, uh, thank you very much. Sounds like a lot of fun. It does. And thank we'll be you. right back with the cops of the bad guys list here on Top Story. 7360300 is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. And uh, here's here's what we got going this morning. Now, off 
Officer Justin Henderson with the Twin Falls Police Department uh, insisted that I play this song for him. How come that music hasn't disappeared? How come only the music I, I like disappears? I don't know, Jill. I, I can't Could help you Could you please there. investigate this, please, Officer Henderson? Somehow uh, my music I'll, I'll see, disappears. I'll see what I can do. But, okay. you know, that, that does have a catch tune to it. So <laughs> yeah. that, that will never disappear. They no. don't dare delete that one off that, our, our board. That's probably right. All right. Well, Officer Henderson, how you doing? I'm doing great this morning. How are you? Uh, we're doing fine. Well, um, school's back in session now, and and are we fairly safe? Are we uh, haven't been any kids hit or anything like you that? Know, Drivers doing what they're supposed to be doing. They are. the The first week we we had uh, some issues trying to get everybody to slow down, and now everybody's back to you know kind of normal, knowing that the schools are in session and and everybody's doing a lot better. Oh, did you have to give many tickets out? I did give a few tickets. Did out, you? Yes. So yeah. you guys made some money? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I wish we did. I know, huh? Yeah. That $156 fine, just that's not one that you want for Boy, sure. That's... Oh, my. And then, and then how many points does that take? I believe your... I believe for a school zone, it's four points on your record. Oh. Uh, a regular speeding ticket's only three. And out of how many points do you get in a year? Uh, if you get more than, I believe, 12 points in one year, uh, your license will be suspended. Wow. So and then and then there's a process to get it back from there. Isn't you'll, it? Yep, you have to pay a reinstatement fee to get it back, and it. How much is up, that? I I don't. The, the courts will. Whatever. You, yeah. Yep. You have some some fines to pay and and uh, to get it reinstated back with DMV, and it's it costs just, quite a bit of money. It's just easier and cheaper just to drive the speed limit and Absolutely. keep everybody safe. Absolutely. That's right. No. Idaho recently got the distinction from some poll that was done that we have the rudest drivers. In America. In, in America. We're number one with even, that and breastfeeding even, mothers. Even over New York and Massachusetts, which, which I really that find was hard, hard to, to believe. believe. Well, New York, they, a lot of people don't drive. But anyway, Massachusetts, they're brutal. So you give a lot of tickets. Yes. You stop a lot of people, a lot of traffic violations. Are they rude to you? They're not. I mean, a lot of them, you know, they're just trying to get from point A to point B, and we interrupt that. Uh, the nerve. Yeah, I know it. I know. <laughs> uh, you know, they have to understand that we're doing our job, too. You know, uh, our number one goal out there is try to prevent accidents to make sure that everybody's safe. One of the ways doing that is enforcing traffic. And unfortunately, these are some of the things we do, and, you know, some of the violations come with hefty fines. And uh, we just, we got to do what we got to do to, you know, keep everybody safe as possible. So there's no attitude tickets given out? No, there's not. You know, what we try and do is we try and make sure that, uh, you know, when we see a violation happen, that we're going to make our decision up before we even talk to the driver whether we're going to get them a ticket or not for that fact to make sure that we do not give attitude tickets. So do people try to, like, butter you up or, or women try to go, hey? Well, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hot yeah, officer. Would, do that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just practicing for when I get stopped for going under the speed limit yeah, yeah. again. You know, put a little sticky note there to make sure that yeah. you smile and everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Do they of try? Course, yeah, of course they, they try. They do? Yeah. You know, there, there's, they try to get out of tickets, you know, different ways, trying to joke them with you and stuff like that. And, and uh, you know, it does help help the scene a little bit better as far as, you know, kind of relaxing the people and stuff and kind of, you know, making them feel that, you know, it's not the end of the world if you do get a ticket and, just um, three or four points, whatever. Exactly, yeah. yeah. $156. Yeah. No it, it's problem. Just, yeah, it's just money, you know. <laughs> Everybody's got loads of it, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, is the process for getting co- tickets faster now? Because you used to have to write everything out in that little book. Now, don't you have this kind of the receipt that you go back to your little mobile unit and put in the driver's license and... Yeah, all all we have to do now is, you know, every car and our motorcycles have computers in them. Uh, we go back and scan the barcode on the back of the driver's license and scan the barcode on the uh, registration, prints out the ticket, and we're done. Oh. It, it's a lot faster, yeah. Do you so, also catch people who might have fraud, like maybe using different driver's license or things like that? Is this the most accurate way? You know, I personally haven't uh, dealt with anything like that, and I haven't heard of anything like that. It could happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, they could, you know, most of it would be, you know, changing the picture on it more than anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, that would be the the one thing that we would look at is the picture on the driver's license doesn't match. You know, if 
it's a male on the driver's license right. and a female that gives it to you and it has her name on it, you know, there might be something. There could be a problem. <laughs> yeah, there could and, be a little bit of a problem. And the name's Bob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something is up there. I'm not quite sure what it is, but. <laughs> Good thing you were trained for this. I got a feeling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So yes. over the last year or two, then, the average time, I suppose, for a stop has gone from probably, what, 10 minutes to 30 seconds or something like yeah, that? Yeah. You know, by the time uh, we, we still run the name and everything like that. Uh, we can choose to run it over a dispatcher or through a computer and still do that process, but uh, it has cut the time down quite a bit of issuing a citation. And, and uh, you does know, your computer you. ever go out? Absolutely. Like, yeah. And then Absolutely. what still, happens? Yeah, then we have to re- resort back to the good old fashioned days of writing the citation. Press out. hard, three Press copies. Hard. Yeah, but, but you haven't forgotten how to do that, right? <laughs> well, no, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. Well, Officer Justin Henderson, thank you, sir. We Please be careful out there. Yeah. Thanks for what you do. Appreciate it. Thank you. And mm-hmm. we are going to be talking schools next here on Top Story. 7360300 is the uh, number to call here this morning on Top Story. Welcome back. Before we uh, get to talking about uh, schools, schools, uh, I wanted to tell you about irrigation pipe. Oh, you good. Think, oh, my gosh. Irrigation pipe. I mean, how exciting can that be? Well, actually, if, if you you're into farming... You can make anything sound exciting, Kelly. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> yes, we can keep you on the edge of your seat. I'm on there. No moving pipe. No <laughs> spraying around the edge of the field anymore. Uh, no more spraying your borders. I already said that. No more costly labor to move the pipe. Now, we talked to the folks at uh, Far More of Idaho about this here a couple of weeks ago when they were in here. Spencer and Weston, wasn't it? Yes. And uh, about the Certiset. It's a new flexible pipe you can put out in your field now instead of the old aluminum pipe and stuff that you have to have a crew go out and move around and, and stuff. This is this is the next step up in technology. It's called Certiset. You can ask them about it. If you're considering a new irrigation system for your field, you might want to give them a call and ask them about this before you decide on something else. Certiset from Farmore of Idaho, 324-3341, or at farmoreofidaho.com. Tana Schroeder is with us. Is that it, Tana Schroeder? Yes, you got it. Nice to have you here with us. Thank you. Good morning. And um, you're, a, you're a teacher at Harrison? I'm actually a para-educator right now. I'm in school to be a teacher, though. So it won't yeah. be long now, huh? Yes, I'm very excited. What do you want right. to teach when you get out? I would out? prefer the upper grades, but... I've been in all the grades, and I do love it, but I would love fifth grade, fourth grade. Idaho history, yeah. I think, would be really fun. Oh, oh that yeah. would be nice. Yes, yes. Oh, good. So uh, you are working on uh, some grants here. Is that right? Well, you we, have the our school and... got a grant, and oh, okay. it's the 21st Century Learning Grant, and I think we're the only school in Twin Falls that has it. There are some other schools in Idaho that also have it, but it provides a before and an after school program for these kids. So I run the before school, which starts at 740, and then we go till about 815 so they can go in and get breakfast. And so what are you, what is the grant? I mean, are they learning about 21st century and no, no one else the is? Idea, <laughs> the, the, the idea of the grant is to really get the community involved in our schools so that these kids have more positive role models in their life, really. So they come in at 7.45? Mm-hmm. They come in at 7.40, and we're still in, let's see here, we started September 8th, so we're still in the beginning stages yeah. of it, so that's mostly why I'm here. But, yeah, right now we're doing Lego projects, so we have a few. We need some more. We're d- working on bridge building with the Legos, which is very fun. We Our school has teaches these kids um Eight Habits of Highly Effective People. And so for right now... Please share, because Kelly and yeah. I really need this. <laughs> I know. They've been great Immediately. Me. <laughs> yeah. It's really cool, because you'll hear in the classrooms, the teachers are always saying, you know, this habit. And so right now, we're trying to kind of focus a habit a week until we get some more volunteers in there. What habit are you focusing on this week? This week, we are working on synergizing. So working as a group, which okay. is surprisingly difficult, because... They have to communicate and get along. How old are these kids? We have first grade through fifth grade. And this is surprisingly? Well, <laughs> I know, but I think I'm <laughs> such an idealist. So in my head, I think, why? I would love the other, well, you know, I the advice. Know. I wouldn't know how to yeah. build a bridge. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. yeah, I mean, inevitably, there are some boys who are going to be really good, and then this girl may have an idea, and she gets her feelings hurt. But we talk about synergizing and working together. And then we also are tying, there's a habit that um, seek first to understand and be understood. And so one of our kids just, he said, hey, this goes in with that habit too, because I'm trying to listen to her 
and get her advice, but I want her to understand me too. So they're teaching these kids some really great um, tools. For Do you their see a lives. difference? I know it just started, but after the first week, what was the first week's lesson? Oh, first week we just talked about finding your inner voice. So we talked about what that meant, and it was finding your special talent. So they got to basically design themselves, and then we had to write about what they were great at. And it was a little bit sad because some of them couldn't come up with anything. And I said, gosh, everybody is great at something. So our goal is to find your greatness. I'm a loser. (laughs) Well, (laughs) they were all great at video games. And I said, I know you're great at something besides video games. And so, you know, that's why I love this grant because I think we can bring community members in who can help these kids broaden their horizon, change their mindset and say, maybe I'm interested in more than just video games and computers or YouTube. Or if they are, then I would love for somebody to come in who understands how those video games are made. I am not that person. And so if they understand that, teach these kids that, okay, let's head in that direction, but let's make it a positive path. So what are you looking for exactly? People might well, not The biggest be sure. thing right now is we're doing a Lego drive. So if people have Legos from children and you're hanging on to it, if you have too many, if you're willing to just donate them out of the goodness of your heart. If you want to get love, them off your carpet. Yeah. Yes, don't Step throw them anymore. away. And I understand. Between I have the cushions of the couch. So. No kidding. I have five boys and we love oh. Legos and I step on them and I throw them away. It's uh, terrible. But now I'll just donate them to the school. <laughs> this was before we started this Lego drive. But um, we would love Legos. There's so many STEM activities that you can do around Legos, and also reading and language development too with Legos. So now, when you say STEM, tell us again the about science, that. That's science, technology, okay. engineering, yeah. and mathematics, yeah. which is really what. Well, the Legos of my day, back in the middle of the last century, mm-hmm. was the Erector set. Right. You know, and I had and I built everything under the sun mm-hmm. with that thing, and it was so much fun. And and so now Legos, they're kind of the new Erector set. Yeah, they are, and yeah. I don't. It, It's even better for me. I'm not going to give the kids instructions and the directions. Right, just let them do what they want. Right, take a piece and, you know, they're like, well, this is hard. Well, do something hard, you know, use your imagination. And if it doesn't work... Yeah, don't coddle these kids. You sit there and make it some tough love. Don't tell them everything's a good job. (laughs) Exactly. and you know, everybody gets a trophy. Right. Well, yesterday (laughs) we had a contest on whose bridge was the strongest. And one team, their bridge wasn't even long enough. So I said, well, you don't even get to compete because it didn't qualify. Wow. And then the other two, one collapsed, and they looked startled. (laughs) But I said, okay, now you just get back with your group and you figure out, okay, what is it that we can do differently? If I had an engineering background, I could have explained more. So anybody out there with an engineering background, so are you okay. looking so for that's what you're looking for then is, is members of the public who would Absolutely. like to come in and help these kids. Yeah, and them if they their want expertise. to, well, we're kind of calling it um, adopt a class. So if you can't come in the morning, I would love to see you in the morning, but I do know that that's a difficult time for people. But after school is from four to six p.m. And we do have um, people from CSI that come over and are working with them with biology and science things. We have a teacher who talked to him about archaeology. And so now one of our little second graders thinks he wants to be an archaeologist. Nice. And it was awesome because mm. he didn't even know what that was before. Right. Yeah. And now right. he's yeah. totally interested in it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you have any sort of skill or desire to just come in and to help these kids out in drama, music, Art, teach them some woodworking, real art. Like, woodworking, Cali class. Or really even, I just think an entrepreneur, somebody yeah. who yeah. started that, to teach these kids that, you, you know. You can do whatever. You can really do whatever. Their circumstances are really difficult, a lot of these kids. But I just think, why not them? You know, they should sure. still why be able to do this. Dream? Yeah. Absolutely. It yeah. might be difficult for them, but they're going to be able to do it. This sounds like a really nice program. It is. It's a great thing. The thing we, we, that we need to do nowadays, it seems to me like, and I'm not a teacher, my wife taught for 27 mm-hmm. years, but we need to teach the kids how to motivate themselves and how to realize that there are other things out there besides their stupid smartphone. Right. And and communicating with other people that you don't even see. And, and, and I don't know, it just sounds like a great deal to me. It really is. And I think that, you know, sometimes we get the mindset, well, my kids are gone with school, out of school, so I, the parents are done with school. But 
Instead, I think we forget that these children are soon going to be adults in right. our community. And right. so if you gotta we... got to pay it forward. Absolutely. And so why not come in and inspire these children? Because you will see them out in the community. You're going to see them at the grocery store right. and at community events. And I guarantee you that when they see you and they recognize you, their faces light up. They love seeing teachers or people in the school. They love seeing them out in public. And it's more positive um, inspiration that they really need. So if someone wanted to do this, would it just be like one class period? I mean, or would it be multiple or how many? It's how really, much we'll commitment? take what we can get. I mean, okay. honestly, so you're not tied into a contract or anything. If you only have one hour in a month to give and you want to break that up into, you know, 20 minutes, we'll take that. So whatever you can do, if you can only do after school from between four to 6 p.m., that's great. And if you, like I said, any sort, we'd love to start doing um, yoga in the mornings with the kids and to just kind of teach them to get into fitness right. and to calm down. Some of them need that. You think? But yeah. It, but it, some exercise, some nutrition classes. If you want to come in and talk about nutrition with these kids, I think it would be that would really be great. Fun. Healthy eating would be interesting. Absolutely. And would to you do expose a them class? to vegetables. I would love to do cooking with okay. them. And somebody had talked about doing like a microwave cooking class because some of these that might be all that they have. And oh, you just said the dirty college. word with Jill. I don't even know. I microwave. know, I know, but for and some of these kids, that's you. what they have. Well, yeah. do they must have yeah. a burner and a pot? So some of them might, but come in and we would set it up and figure it out. Okay. And I would like to even just do. I told these kids, I said we're going to do like a challenge on who can eat the most healthy vegetable and not make a face or something because I know that. They're it's not sad, and you have it to get them sad. at this age. I used to teach fifth to seventh graders health cooking at CSI mm -hmm. for six years, and when they're involved, when they smell mm -hmm. it, when they taste it, when they make it, they eat it. Yeah, I, mean, I had a meeting tofu and bok choy. Did you? And gobbling up sautéed kale. Yes. Until the parents walked in. And then <laughs> right. said, wow, I could never get little Bobby to eat that. And I then know. little Bobby stopped eating it. And it's like, oh, my gosh, please stay out of the classroom. Right. You're killing me. <laughs> I know. It's I true. know. It is true. And kids love to cook. Yeah. They love so to cook. So we could do that. I would do that. Yeah, anything like that. It would be It would be really great. So how long will this program continue? Say you got a grant, and they're usually only good for so long. So. The longest um, we can, I believe Jenny said, was five years is the longest. Oh, that's oh. But that's we also good. have requirements that we are we have to fulfill in order to maintain the grant to keep it at our school like what well we do need to have our community involvement okay. she has jenny's are actually our director so when people want to volunteer i can give you her email address or you can call harrison directly do you want yeah. to give the number but, out in case people are listening and want to volunteer because we have yes, a lot of listeners so who want to probably you know have sure. great life experience might be retired and yes can that's share right. that to this younger yeah, generation that's kind of what i was hoping was yeah. to reach out to them our number at harrison is 733 4229. And then Jenny's email address is um, Reese, R E E S E J E, at TF, as in Frank SD, for Twin Falls School District.org. Okay, great. Wow. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there. And I think so. Who have great life experience. And yeah. you might not have kids anymore or grandkids it's or whatever. It's very fulfilling this to be in a school and to watch these little oh, yeah. kids and to help them. Yeah. I remember when I was in school in the middle of the last century, uh, there was a, it was called the DECA program. Uh -huh. I wasn't in it, but it was it was kind of sort of like this in that I think the kids actually went to the businesses. Right. 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 They, been do awesome. they still have that? I don't, know. I don't know. It was in high school when I was in high yeah. school. It was in yeah. high school when I was I in high school, too. I think it was too. just a high school. I always thought program. that yeah. was great. I never did it, but I thought it was great. Yeah. I'm like, why didn't I do that? Yeah. And uh. even if we have, you know, high school students now, I don't understand how sometimes their schedules, like they only go in the morning and then they have the whole afternoon open. Right. And so it would be mm. great for high school students. And I even think some of these kids who are homeschooled now, we're getting a, quite a population of people mm -hmm. who are homeschooling now. Bring your kids in yeah. and teach them something different. Right. You know, talk right. about history or whatever right. it is that they're focusing on because that's a great way to, so we're not so disconnected right. that we are all kind of, you know, yeah. just tolerant of one another. And so I just think we would take any sort of, um, yeah, volunteers and Legos. We definitely need more Legos. So. I wish I had Legos to donate. I, <laughs> I, I don't have kids. We're working on well, a Lego grant. So. If anybody has Legos out there, yes. whether kids are or gone, gone, or yep. even grandparents whose the the grandkids don't play with the Legos anymore. Or you can buy Legos and, and donate. Them, absolutely. Correct? Oh, yeah, yes, you can exactly. do that. Wow, too. what about yeah. new Legos? <laughs> right. Okay, so if they if they wanted to do that, how would they get them to you? Bring them 
to Harrison Did Elementary. Bring him to Harrison. Mm-hmm. Harrison. Where's Harrison located? In case on Harrison. On Harrison. <laughs> yeah. If uh, um, off of Falls. Okay. So and then you'll just find Harrison so right there. It's right Falls across from on CSI. On CSI. Okay, uh-huh. because there are new people in the community. You're right. <laughs> And what's the yeah. phone number again? 733-4229. All right, Tana Schroeder, this has been very well, interesting. Tana, Good luck in this program. And I think Thank you're going to be a terrific teacher. Thank you. I'm Absolutely. very excited. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Coming up next hour, we have a second congressional district candidate for the uh, Democrat ticket, Richard Stallings, right here on Top Story. And welcome back to Top Story, 736-0300 is the number to call into our third half now. Yes. And uh, wow, it's going to be a scorcher today. Why? Well, I, was I think yesterday down. at this time it was at like sixty, and now it's it's seventy one right okay. now. Okay, all right. So, then. and I noticed this morning when I left to come in here, it was somewhat warmer than it had been. So, man, I don't know. Well, what is it? In just a few days, it'll be the first day of fall. I think so. And then things will change overnight. It'll be 80 one day and 40 the next. That's always the way it is. There you go. Welcome you know, to Idaho. That's always the way it is. We have a congressional candidate uh, on the Democrat ticket, uh, Richard Stallings, with us this morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's nice to be here with you folks. I, I, it's been two or three months since I was here last. It and, has. Yeah, I've yeah. missed this. I wanted to get back <laughs> how, more often. But you, you missed us specifically, yes, right? Yes, I mean, yes. And we appreciate that. We do. And how are things going on the campaign trail? Well, I think very well. We've been well received. I'm, I'm very pleased with the number of people that receive me. You know, when you, you're out of the limelight for 20-plus years, you think, well, people either forget you or they're all dead. But uh, <laughs> we have, uh, everywhere I go, people are very, very uh, fond and, and positive towards me, and uh, they're glad I'm running. So I'm. It, it, has, it has been an easier go than I thought it would when I got into this because I thought, like a new candidate, you'd have to start right. from scratch, and that's not the case. I have a pretty good base, about 34 35% at this point, and so... We're pretty pretty optimistic about things. Now, for those, um, we've had a lot of new folks move in yeah. to our neck of the woods here. So give us a little bit of your history because you were well, a congressman before. I was. I served from, I, I won an election in 1984. I ran against a seven-term Republican that had been found guilty of four felonies. <laughs> And so I thought... And you still had a tough time. That's <laughs> exactly right. I, I Crazy. Had, I thought Democrats, not particularly popular in a red state like Idaho, but against a felon, surely. Surely. <laughs> and lo and behold, we won, but about by 66 votes out of over 200,000 cast. Wow, wow. So it was one of the closest elections in the nation. Now, after the canvas and a recount... I was up to 170, so I went back to Washington as landslide. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I served for four terms. The last election in 1990, I won by 66% of the vote. So I got did I did well. People liked my service. I was very, very fortunate to have a great staff, and we did good stuff. I got a lot passed. I was one of the most successful congressmen. In fact, I had a reporter tell me that I was probably the most successful congressman, not senator, but congressman that I was elected in the last half century. And, and I think that's the case because we did a couple of major water bills, the Swan Falls Water Agreement, the Fort Hall Water Agreement. Uh, I carried through the House, worked closely with Senator McClure, which by today's standards is almost radical because a Democrat and Republican working together is, is just unheard of. But And McClure and I got along pretty well. Uh, we did a, a secondary market for agricultural real estate so these smaller towns and smaller banks could can find financing to help move agricultural real estate. I brought equity between wheat growers and barley growers in the government programs, put a small hydro project up on Island Park Reservoir that that generated power for those folks up there. So we had a very successful eight years. I enjoyed it. I provided great service, and I stayed out of trouble. Someone said, Stallings, your problem is you're boring, and I kind of agree with (laughs) that. Like, that's That's, okay. Yeah. So do you think in this climate and this uh, Congress it's going to be more difficult because, honestly, compromise is a dirty word back there? How do you think you can deal with it this time? Well, I I was able to reach across party lines. On one of my bills, Dick Cheney was one of my co-sponsors. Now, if you can get someone like Cheney as a co-sponsor a piece of legislation with you, you've really— been been successful. I will insist that we work across party lines. I'm going to be a shock to that legislative body, unlike anyone since Eric Cantor's loss. Because for a state like Idaho to send back a, a Democrat, replace a uh, eight-term Republican who is, is high in seniority and, and, and pretty pompous, um, will send a shock to it. And my message is going to be, 
people in Idaho and people in the nation are sick of this obstructionism, of this fighting, of this pettiness. And it's time we do things like pass a minimum wage so that we can get a lot of people out of poverty. It's like deal with immigration reform because we've got 11 million people living in the shadows as second-class citizens. It's give women equal pay for equal work. It's help students by letting them do something simple like refinancing their, right. their college loans. I mean, come on, this is not rocket science. This is not solving the Syrian-Israeli crisis. This is something that says stop hurting the people you're supposed to represent. Stop making their lives more miserable and do the right thing because, well, for example, the minimum wage. We have in Idaho about 176,000 people living in poverty simply because Congress will not pass the minimum, raise the minimum wage. Now, for Mr. Simpson, it's purely politics because he will say, well, it's inflationary and it'll cause all problems. He did not have those concerns when Bush was president. They passed a, a minimum wage increase very easily at that point. But now because this president has suggested they won't do it. But the problem is, you've got all these folks in Idaho that are caught in a trap where they can't, they can't escape because a woman has to work sometimes two jobs at minimum wage to take care of her family. And a big part of that goes to child care. Right. The rest of it goes to housing, goes to food, and she has nothing left to spend on her kids. And so we help subsidize those minimum wage jobs by providing them food stamps. Mm -hmm. providing housing subsidies, providing a variety of government services that would all go away if we did something simple like raising the minimum wage. Now, Because that not, goes directly back into the economy. Oh, it would. These yeah. folks are not going to put that money in the Cayman Islands. Right. They're gonna, not going to put it in a Swiss bank. They're going to spend it in Filer, and they're going to spend it in, in Twin Falls, and they'll spend it in Eden. They'll spend it here in the Valley. And it will boost this economy by the tunes of, of hundreds of millions of dollars. So it is a simple solution to many of our problems. And yet they won't do it just because they're, they're, they're mean and they don't think that poor people deserve a break. Well, the more conservative uh, people in this argument would say that when does the government intrusion stop? Now, I know we have a minimum wage right now, yes. but how much higher does this have to go? And, and how come you have to keep uh, paying people who may not even be worth the minimum wage? I think, and and the more you hire at a higher minimum wage, you might have to let somebody go. Well, the the experience has not been that. That has not been the case. The experience has been that if anything, they, it creates some jobs because many of these single moms will quit one of their two jobs instead of working sixteen hours a day, they'll work eight hours a day, spend a little more time with their kids, and so that will free up some additional jobs. My sense is anyone that works full time ought to be have a living wage. I don't care what their educational background is. I can't think of any jobs that, that, whether it's flipping hamburgers at a fast food joint or stocking shelves at Walmart, these people deserve at least a livable wage because otherwise you and I will support them on welfare. And we, we'll have, support them. And we have seen that in, in yeah. our surrounding states, and they haven't gone bankrupt and they haven't no. had problems that no. way. Seattle pays $15 an hour for minimum wage. If you buy a hamburger in Twin Falls and they go to Seattle and buy the same hamburger, the price is going to be the same. There's no inflationary impact. McDonald's, Walmart, Home Depot, these well, Home Depot's not in, in that category, but these big box stores have already built into, into their budgets a higher wage, but this is the easiest way for them to increase their profits because in any business, the most expensive part of your operation is your labor costs. And by keeping the minimum wage, they, they are making huge profits, they, but they're hurting themselves because, for example, Walmart, their clientele are the poor people that are on minimum wage. I mean, that's who they truly market to. And by keeping these people poor, they don't have the wherewithal to go and spend more money at Walmart. I mean, Henry Ford learned this mm -hmm. a century ago when he said, if I give people a higher wage, they'll buy my cars. And they did it. It made Ford a very, very successful operation. He was not a great fan of unions. He was not a great fan of government intrusion. He just knew simple economics that said if people have spending power— they will spend it, and they'll spend it in these local stores. And I think it is just nonsense for, for companies to, to continue to exploit workers by denying them just a decent living wage. You put them in an awful situation, and you not only hurt them, but you hurt their children. You hurt future generations. So I think it's an easy solution to a problem that would raise 176,000 Idahoans out of poverty. And, and what's wrong with that idea? Right. Rich, we have a caller. Yeah, we have a caller. Tom Story, you're on the air with Richard Stallings. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I used to work in fast food, obviously, when I was younger. 
and I can tell you that every time they run across it when they're slow, they'll print out a sheet, they'll look at it, and they'll say, okay, you can go home early, you can go home early. What I see whenever you raise the minimum wage, I see a lot more people going home early and less full-time jobs. The, the, it's too fuzzy of math. It doesn't add up, is what I'm saying. It, how could it add up? A hamburger's going to cost more in this state. Seattle, Washington, whatever, they didn't. They haven't been doing it that long. It's going to catch up to them. All right. What are you? Well, th- that's just not correct. Uh, the minimum wage is not going to have an impact on the cost of a hamburger at McDonald's. You can see it today. Go to Post Falls and then into Coeur d'Alene or over into Spokane, and the prices are exactly the same of, of the fast food. Uh, I think that the idea of, of people going home early, maybe they will go home early because there's not enough business there. But my sense is when you raise the minimum wage, you're going to increase consumption. Mm-hmm. And that will require at least the same workforce or maybe even more. I would think that will create some jobs. Uh, I think that by keeping people in poverty is, is not a healthy situation because you are developing a generation of folks in poverty. You have single moms just killing themselves trying to support two or three children. I've got a couple on my staff that we're paying now $10 an hour, which is the minimum wage that I'm advocating. And it is making a difference in their lives. I think that that's something that we could do very easily. And by the way, the majority of Idahoans agree with me. The polls all show that a vast majority of, of Idahoans, as well as Americans, support this concept. And so I, I think there'll be some that'll oppose it and they'll fight it. And, uh, and maybe some specialty businesses may have a little trouble with it. But I think for the vast majority of our people, Raising 176,000 people would do wonders for this economy, right. would do wonders for families, and would, would help virtually all phases of our society. We have another caller. Top story. You're on the air with Richard Stallings. Good morning. Yes, sir. Mr. Stallings, uh, if you ever watch uh, oil prices, when a barrel of oil raises two cents or a nickel, our gas prices here at the pumps in Twin Falls, Idaho, will jump up one or two cents. <clears throat> then when it drops down below a dollar a barrel, a month, three weeks later, maybe the drop a penny. Explain that if they don't increase the prices. Well, I, I'm sure it does. I'm sure the price of oil has a direct impact on what they charge at the pumps here, and I think you're right. I think those uh, folks that sell gasoline are slow to reduce the, the, the cost of the pump, even though they're, they're getting their product at a less price. But I think you could also argue that, that a guy may have bought ten or 15,000 gallons at the higher price, and I don't think that he can turn around the next day and, and lower the price because the price of oil has, has gone down. I think he'll pass it on when he's through that. But I, I can't speak for or justify or explain because I'm not a great fan of the oil companies. In fact, if, if we talk about helping poor people's form of subsidy. Do you know how much money we give to Exxon? How much money we give to British Petroleum in the way of subsidies? I mean, it's in the billions of dollars. So you'll argue against helping a single mom here in Twin Falls get $3 an hour increase and sort of wink at Exxon at the oil companies get a $4 billion annual subsidy. I mean, that to me is the outrageous part of this whole process. We Can you stay for another segment? I would love to. I'll be here afternoon or all morning if you Okay, want. well, we got we got some calls <laughs> coming some in, calls. so we'd like to take those calls. We have a Richard Stallings with us, second uh, district congressional candidate on the Democrat ticket, and we'll be right back. 7360300 is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. Yesterday's $100 instant winning name is Ron England. Ron England, congratulations. And your $100 word of the day for today is park. Park. P A R K. Park. So go to our website at newsradio1310.com, type in the word park on the word of the day, listen tomorrow. If you hear your name tomorrow and you played the word today, you win $100. That's how easy that is. It just don't get any easier than that, does it? <laughs> no. We have uh, uh, second district congressional candidate Richard Stallings with us uh, on the Democrat ticket, and we have some callers coming in. And at this point, I'm just going to let the callers yeah. ask questions because it. it looks sure. like they want to. So, top story, you're on the air with Richard Stallings. Good morning. Hey, do you know what the minimum wage in Norway is? I don't. They don't have a minimum wage in Norway. Okay. And you know how much the average... McDonald's employee makes in Norway? Probably more than seven and a quarter. Sixteen to twenty four dollars an hour. And you know how much a happy meal costs? Eighteen I, bucks. Wow. Well, Gas well. is eight dollars a gallon. Seventeen dollars for a cinema ticket. 
the the problem with minimum wage when you raise it up, you why not make it twenty dollars an hour? And then everybody's making forty grand a year. The problem is is when everybody making forty grand a year, forty grand a year isn't worth as much. Hey, whenever you put more money into the market like that, you cause inflation. One of, one of the biggest problems we have, and by the way, the way Norway does it with no minimum wage, is their uh, immigration is very low. Not a lot of people are immigrating into Norway and Scandinavia in general because it is very difficult to get into those countries to become a citizen. In the United States, we have a large pool of uh, immigrant work coming in from Mexico, legal and illegally, that, that keeps our wages artificially low. I, I've, I've said a million times that the well, let's, let's, let's let the con- let's yeah. go ahead and comment on the hit. well you know he's he's absolutely right uh, if if you don't have a large demand or a large labor pool to draw from then you have to pay wages to attract workers and, and in Norway that is probably exactly the cause that you you have a shortage of workers and so for McDonald's to get quantity quality workers they have to pay wages that is not the case here now in, in terms of it creating inflation. It has not done so in the past. We've raised the minimum wage in the last half century probably 10, 15 times. Uh, the last time it was raised was during the Bush administration, in which my opponent, Mr. Simpson, had no trouble voting to raise the minimum wage because it was from his own party that was was proposing that. But right now he won't do it because it comes from uh, this president. But I think in our situation where you have such a, a large number of unemployed and a large number of folks on minimum wage, you're, you're inviting trouble because people will only be abused for so long, and, and then they find alternative ways to enhance income, and, and one of it is by stealing. If, if I'm a parent, I've got kids that need food, and I'm not making enough money to feed them, I will find other ways to get food. And I think that is the, the bottom line to all this. It's cheaper to raise the minimum wage than to put people in prisons or people in jail. And I think, frankly, that's the choice you get because people – will only be pushed around and abused and exploited for so long. And then at some point, some guy's going to say enough of this and he'll go out and find ways to feed his family that may not be legal. And then we start running into, into costs. Now, no one wants to do that. Uh, these single moms that are trapped in this miserable mm-hmm. place do not want to go out and, and, and have to do illicit activities to enhance their income. But their first responsibilities in their own minds and hearts is to take care of those kids and they will do what they need to do. And so... My suggestion is that we save government money by stopping the food stamps, right. by stopping the subsidies, give them a decent wage. It will not have an inflationary impact. It has not in the past, and I'm convinced it will not this time. And it hasn't in the states that are higher than the federal yeah, minimum is, wage because there are states that can pay higher. Yes, there are. There's a number of states, and they're doing it sometimes in their own states. Idaho has opted to follow the federal government, and that's kind of a, a cop-out for our legislature, because if they were really concerned about their own people, they would take the initiative. But somehow they'll wait for the Uncle Sam to make this move, and then they will follow suit. So I, I, I understand your argument. I think you make a lot of sense in countries where you have stable populations or even declining populations like they do in the Scandinavian countries. But we're not in those countries. We're in a situation today where you have 176,000 Idahoans living in poverty and receiving government subsidies where the government is subsidizing Walmart and McDonald's workers. I, I think that's wrong. And I think a living wage is, that's essentially why we passed the minimum wage in the first place, so that people who work full-time or nearly full-time will be able to support themselves. Uh, Tom Story, you're on the air with Richard Stallings. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, would you agree or disagree? A company been in business for a long time, most crunch numbers. I'm sorry. Say that again. You, you, you cut out. It says, would you agree or disagree? A company that's been in business for a while knows how to crunch numbers. Oh, I'm sure they do. I'm sure that's if, that, if they stayed in business well, for a while, they that, definitely done that. That disproves your whole theory. <laughs> if, if that was true and paying your workers, whether they're worth it or not, more money just because they're a warm body... All businesses would do it, but it's not true because if you do that, then that doesn't help the business. The business All right, we're gonna we're gonna go into a break here. You want to respond to that real quick? Well, just be very yeah. Uh, it's just not correct. Uh, Costco pays great wages. Compare they them do. with Walmart. They sell their goods at about the same price, or at least Sam's Club. Uh, and yet Costco has a much h- higher productivity level from their workers. They have less turnover. Uh, they have people to stay with them for longer periods of time. They're a very responsible company. 
they are not hurt by paying people livable wages. And I think that any company that does that will realize very quickly that you'll have more customers, you'll have higher profits, and it's just a very simple solution to the problem of poverty and miserably economic cir- circumstances. We'll be right back towns. with Richard Stallings. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call. We have a uh, second congressional district uh, candidate, Richard Stallings, and the Democrat ticket with us this morning. We're going to take one more call on the uh, minimum wage, and then we're going to talk a little bit about immigration. Don't want to spend the whole time on minimum wage. Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> when I was young, and that was a ways back, I can remember making oh, $3 an hour, somewhere around there, maybe even less, and thought it was pretty good when I got $4 an hour, but the hamburgers were 19 cents. The gas was 11 cents when they had gas wars. And through the time, every time they do a minimum wage raise, all the prices go up around us. And now look at our gas, and we're making, you know, a pretty good wage. Uh, I know the minimum wage sounds low, but comparing to the each time you raise the minimum wage, everything goes up. Every prices of everything goes up. And so, where do you really gain anything by doing? Uh, raising the minimum wage. Well, I'll be brief. That's just not the case. Historically, and we've raised the minimum wage, as I said earlier, a dozen or so times. I voted to raise the minimum wage when I was in Congress before in the 80s. It does not have that kind of impact that you're talking about. This stuff goes up because of demand or supply, but it is not because you've given people more spending power and they go out and buy more goods that drives up inflation. And so there is no evidence that 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 you're suggesting has ever happened. Uh, and, and you must be a youngster because my first job was minimum wage. It's 55 cents an hour. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to talk about tough times and, and, and growing up in those kinds of environments, and, and my first job, by the way, was setting pins at a bowling alley at seven cents a line. Mm. That worked out at about a dollar an hour. Uh, so it was, you know, we can go back to the good old days, but the facts are every time the minimum wage has been raised, you help people, you give them more spending power, but you have no effect on inflation or upon the... the the cost of goods. So, you know, you and I will disagree on that. And I, I, I respectfully suggest that might you crank that up on the computer and look it up because the facts are on my side on that issue. And also, it hasn't been raised in five years, but prices have still gone up in the last five years. Exactly. But the wages have stayed You're, stagnant. So yes. anyway. Okay, so we've got the southern border issue right now. we yes. got non-citizen children of non-citizen parents coming into the country, yes. overwhelming our facilities there and they're shipping them i guess in other parts into other parts of the country if you were in charge today what would you do to fix that i would treat them as refugees i would treat them like we have other refugees after the vietnam war we brought in some vietnamese people as refugees these are children and i just can't imagine parents saying goodbye to their kids in in central america turning them over to coyotes to bring them up here but they will do that because the life down there is so dangerous they're either forced into gangs, the girls are forced into the sex trade, uh, and parents are saying, I would rather take a risk on sending them in the hands of coyotes and hope they will find right. refugee uh, refuge in the United States. We had a group of Tea Party folks out demonstrating when this thing first hit, and I got a group to counter-demonstrate because I believe this is a nation as so clearly outlined on the Statue of Liberty. Give us your poor, your destitute, yearning to be free. And I thought, we as a nation are better than that. We shouldn't, uh, the idea of, well, feed them and send them home, which many of the the Republican Congress people were saying, you're sending them to death. You're sending them into sex slavery. Why would we do that to children? These are kids that just want to have time to play and and, and to learn and to be kids. And I think that whole approach to these folks has been, it's just been very nasty to get up and demonstrate because they're on buses. I mean, here, little kids that came here because they're afraid for their right. lives. Right. And how do we sleep with ourselves when we when we treat them like some kind of foreign invading army, for heaven's sakes? There are 50,000 or 60,000 children whose parents gave probably every cent they had to the coyotes to, to get them up here. And they weren't trying to sneak in. They just knocked at the door. They came in a group and said, help they us. They would run to the border agents. They, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it was not a group trying to sneak past the border guards and, and, and or swim across the Rio Grande. It was kids looking for refuge, and that's exactly how I treat them. 
We are about out of time. We've just got a few seconds before the next break. But uh, So where are you headed from here? Well, we've got a luncheon over in Gooding, and then we're going up to Boise State. Or Boise, I've got a house party in Boise tonight. And then tomorrow, uh, we've, I'm speaking at Boise State University. Uh, we have a pretty full schedule. We're, and Saturday, of course, is the homecoming at Boise State. And so being a great follower, I'm not going to say fan <laughs> of Boise State because we have a great college in Pocatello, but we're certainly not in the league, the same category yeah. as Boise State. Yeah. But uh, So we've got, we've got a full, full schedule here, and I'm, I'm excited about the way things are going and about my issues because and the one thing I would like to mention very quickly on this immigration is we've got a big rally coming up on Sunday in Boise, which we're going to have several thousand Latinos from across the state coming there to sort of talk about the plight of, of the illegal, the undocumented. And I think this will be a good opportunity for people to get a sense of, of the size and the quality of people that really do a lot of our work that, that most Americans won't do. And a lot of businesses in Idaho use these well, workers, and they really are fighting because they need the labor. They do. They do. Yeah. You, some people say, well, let's get rid of the 11 million undocumented. You would re destroy our economy if you did that. First of all, it would be so expensive to, do, to, to try to remove that many people. But you've got a whole dairy industry that I think yeah. lives on, the, on, on uh, undocumented workers. We're out of time. Richard Stallings, thank you very thank much you for so joining much. us Thank you so much. Best of luck. My honor to be here. Thank all you. All right. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. Wanted to mention uh, Clearwater Power Equipment because we've been mentioning them here of late. They have a store in Twin Falls now, besides in the Wood River Valley, and they are your dealer, your local dealer for Husqvarna and Echo Power Equipment. Um, <laughs> Clearwater Power Equipment has been the largest power equipment dealer in the Wood River Valley for over 10 years now. So they kind of know their stuff, you know. Uh, now they're in Twin Falls. Uh, they offer sales, service, parts. Uh, their staff is second to none because that's all they deal with. They don't sell lumber and they don't sell dresser drawers and washers and dryers and refrigerators. They sell Husqvarna and Echo. That's what they know. That's what they sell. That's what they service. And they know their stuff. So you got any questions, want to buy one, got one that needs service, got one that needs to be stored through the winter, get a hold of the folks right there. Clearwater Power Equipment, 252 Washington Street, or you can give them a call at 734-7767 and tell them that Kelly and Jill mm -hmm. sent you. Okay, we got a, a couple more issues to talk over here. When you were a crazy teenager... Okay, right there. I was never a crazy teenager. Don't you know me better than that? I was very grounded, always grounded. You probably were. I'm you know, probably I'm sorry. Asking I wish I was. From the but wrong I wasn't. to the wrong person. I know it. Okay, go on. I'll did, pretend. Okay, to the uh, to to you there listening to us right now. Did you ever reach over while your friend was driving oh, and set the underarm hair on fire while he was? Going down the road at, at, I don't know, 60 or 70 miles an hour. When they catch the shirt on fire? Well, they caught, caught the underarm here. This is what happened in Boise. Oh, geez. A teenager crashed his SUV Sunday morning after a passenger used a lighter to set his armpit hair on fire. The crash happened about 5.30 in the morning. Tells where, I mean, it was... Uh, uh, 18-year-old Tristan Myers was driving when his front seat passenger, a 16-year-old boy, set Myers' armpit hair on fire. The driver lost control of the Ford Bronco, rolling the vehicle. Hmm. Two girls in the back seat, ages 15 and 16, were thrown from the vehicle. Oh, no. Myers, his front seat passenger, and a 17-year-old boy remained in the vehicle. None of the teens were wearing seat belts. Oh, no. Three of the teens were taken to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Myers first said that he had swerved to avoid an animal on the road, but the truth emerged after deputies talked to all of the teens. Myers, whose deputies say was speeding and driving erratically before the crash, was cited for inattentive driving. Now, the guy who set his armpit hair on fire ticketed for interfering with the driver's safe operation of a vehicle. That seems about right. What do you think? This, who would even think to do this? I know. I mean, and I'm that, not a teenage boy. You that's can't even put thinking. me in the, being a crazy teenager. It's like being a teenage boy. The things you light on fire. 
I don't, I don't know. It, it's gas. beyond I mean, you guys constantly light things on fire. If someone's passing gas, let's light it Why on fire. Why would you do it when the guy next to you is driving the vehicle that you are riding in down the road at 60 miles an hour or whatever? I mean, that is just... There were two girls in the car. Maybe he was trying to impress them. Well, I, I, I can't imagine being been. thrown out of a car impresses I anyone. I have to say that uh, uh, when I read that story, I thought, this really takes the cake for a lot of stories I've read over the past few years. Teenage boys. It's even made national news, of course. Of course. So of here course. we go again. Only in Idaho. They light their armpit here oh on fire gosh. for fun. Here we go Does again. anyone do that? Have you ever heard of people never, lighting their air, never air heard of that pit, before. armpit hair on I've, fire? I have never heard of that before, I have to admit. Uh, and, and I was kind of like you when I was a teenager... I was kind of great. You were working at I was raised I was on a too. farm. I was a rural kid. I mean, I was driving a tractor before I could ri- walk. And so, you know, I mean, I, I just didn't do stuff like that. And actually, and quite frankly, the kids I went to school with, I don't remember them doing that either, mm. even in their teen years. So anyway. That one anyway. I never heard of. And I think, goodness, I wasn't a teenage boy. Because to think of this stuff. What is wrong with you? Well, what is going in their minds? The sad that they part think of it is? is, I think uh, nowadays, I think girls are becoming kind of more that way. Also, it used to be girls weren't as violent as the no, guys. No, that's but, true. We've talked about that. That's changing now, and uh, I don't remember any of my friends lighting anything on fire. Uh, I, I don't know. At well, any, you hear at that any from rate, guys. All you the know time. when you brush your teeth, yeah, with that Crest whitening toothpaste. It has little bitty, tiny, tiny, tiny polyurethane plastic balls in there. Mm. You can feel that grit. I that, don't use that, yeah. That helps to clean or, and whiten your teeth. Well, now they say that the tiny plastic scrubbers in toothpaste are getting some big-time attention, and recently a dental hygienist, hygienist started warning the dental world of the impacts of those little plastic microbeads. Apparently... If they're catching in people's gums, oh, and then they're attracting, uh, uh, attracting bacteria and causing infections, infections, and that that bad mouth disease they call it periodontal. Pa- periodontal. So now Crest apparently. Oh no! Is gonna, I mean it'll it'll be a. Crest is starting to. Now they're gonna have to they're, go to They're going to take all those out of the toothpaste now. Good. I, so, I, I don't use that stuff anymore. Anyway. How many years have they been? In? I've used that before. You I know, to there's a, a chemical in toothpaste that is used for floor cleaner, SLS. Time for the Huckabee Report. You can hear the Huckabee Report each weekday at this time, brought to you exclusively by Waddell and Reed, Laura Nelson, Josh Funk, and Steve Stanger, the financial advisors. And the number to call is 736-6563. Dave Hansen and the crew at Canyon Pond want you to stop by, see all the guns they have in stock, see the... New and used items they have in stock for camping and, and you know, with hunting right in, in full swing right now, go on in and check out the guns and camping supplies because what better place to buy it than would be a nice, the newest pawn shop in town, mm-hmm. Canyon Pond. is located on uh, Shoshone Street right across from Will's Toyota and he's also online at CanyonPond.com. He's on Facebook. You can call him at 933 933- 2600 tell them the kelly and jill sent you and mm-hmm. if you go in there today and you don't see anything that really strikes your fancy it's a pawn shop go in tomorrow yeah they'll have a new stock they'll have hand. something new that's right so uh, tell them that uh, that uh, kelly and jill sent you at uh, yeah. canyon pawn you know also coming up on october 4th is a um, uh the annual bras i don't know how many years we've been doing that. i think third or fourth annual I don't Bra- know. Brajas across the canyon 2014. Uh, sponsored by Arlo G. Lot Trucking Company, also by South Central Public Health, uh, Glanbia, and uh, Chick fil A will be there with uh, free chicken sandwiches. And if they run out of those, they'll be handing out coupons. Now, this is a big event that is in, in, uh, in support of uh, breast cancer awareness. It's part of the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It helps provide uh, breast health services. For those who have no medical insurance and are underinsured in our communities. And 100% of the donations will benefit the Wellness Tree Community Clinic, which is a local charity. 
Uh, so decorate your bra, bring it on down. Uh, we're going to have a, a walk across the canyon, a, a walk across the bridge, actually, yeah. on both sides, and you can carry the bras, you can you can wave the bras, you can wave your signs. It's just it's actually a good time, and uh, a lot of neat stories uh, are told there, and it's just uh, it's a great inspirational place to be. That's October fourth, uh, from noon until three. Uh, at the it'll be at the Perrine Bridge and a lot of people show up. There's overflow parking at Johnny Carino's, so you won't uh, be short of a place to park. So we'll look forward to seeing you on October fourth at Bras across the canyon. I like to call them Brajas. And I don't know why it, sound, it sounds so annoying. <laughs> Man, that does. That, it sounds annoying to you? It does. That's Brajos. why I do it. Oh, That's why go. I'm here, Jill. I should have said I love how it sounds, <laughs> but anyway, um, for a good cause. And and tomorrow's Friday. Are you kidding already? I we have a you. packed house tomorrow. We, do. we will be talking to Jackie Fry tomorrow, who is the Twin Falls County Emergency Services Coordinator. Find so, out what happens when we get another four inches in 72 that's hours. That's exactly right. So we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great one. Goodbye, Jill. Bye, Cal.